So if we talk about fast spin echo imaging, first of all, so here are three examples. Right, these are hot off the press. These were done yesterday, actually. There's a gradient echo image on your left, a spin echo image on, in the middle, and a fast spin echo image on the right. I didn't include it here, but the echo train length is 12. Okay? So the gradient echo image, no spin echo necessary, done with a short TR, even though it's T2 star weighted, it's a short TR because we've used a narrow flip angle to minimize the T1 contrast that would other be otherwise be there due to that short TR. So in a relatively short period of time, we can generate this image where the contrast in this image does not reflect T2, but T2 star. Okay. This is the spin echo image, T2 weighted spin echo image. The TR in this case is 5,000 milliseconds. And this is standard multi-slice spin echo imaging like we looked at before. And it takes a really long time to do. We don't do this. Right? This was done specifically so I could show you an example of what it looks like. We don't do spin echo imaging. In fact, even in the days before fast spin echo, which is actually kind of before my time, T2 weighted images were never acquired with a TR of five seconds like that because it just takes too long. A typical TR of a T2 weighted image would have been maybe 18, 2500 milliseconds and it still would have been a six minute plus scan. But with fast spin echo, right, we can get an image that has at least as good signal to noise, if not better, in dramatically lesser amount of time. Okay? One of the bonuses about being able to image so quickly is that we can use a long TR and not have to worry about the exam taking forever. So whereas in the old days when this was the only thing that was available, the TRs that typically would have been used, like I said, would be hovering around two seconds, 2,000 milliseconds. And the image quality would suffer significantly. The contrast in the images wasn't nearly as good. With this kind of acceleration, it became routine to image with TRs in the five, six, seven second range. Flare images are over 10 seconds in terms of TR. Right? Flare is something that virtually was not a possibility to do when all we had was spin echo imaging. Now, this is a series of examples of T2 weighted fast spin echo images that I've acquired with different echo times. Uh, sorry, different echo trains. So in this case, we've acquired 16 echoes following each TR. And if you follow along, this is 32. This is 64. And this is 128. So what happens as you go to higher and higher echo trains? Notice how this image looks blurry. Look at the edges of the fat and the scalp. All right, see how much sharper those edges are? That's because with a longer and longer echo train, there's lower and lower signal amplitude at our latest echoes. We just don't have the power in terms of signal amplitude in the periphery of K-space to give us that kind of edge definition. Okay. This is just two examples of another area that I don't do much of myself where high speed imaging makes a huge difference. Right? Being able to do fast spin echo imaging right, allows you to do 
imaging of this kind of quality or fast gradient echo imaging within a breath hold. Right? So how long can the average patient hold their breath? 10 seconds. Okay, most people can hold their breath for 10 seconds. I would say most people don't do a very good job of holding their breath when you're getting close to 30 seconds, right? That's kind of like the outer limit. So you need to be able to acquire not just this one image, but generally several slices within that breath hold. And using these types of techniques, whether it's fast gradient echo, where we just cram everything together and repeat it again and again and again very rapidly, or fast spin echo, where we accelerate it by acquiring many lines of case space within a single TR, right? you can do that in a breath hold. So even though this is the abdomen, there is typically breathing, motion, we can eliminate that, that issue of motion. Now, single shot imaging means that we acquire everything following a single excitation. So when we talk about single shot, it simply means we turn on our RF, generate a 90 degree flip angle, let's say, and sample all the lines of case space. So this is an example of single shot fast spin echo. Now one thing to be aware of is that generally acquiring all of those lines of case space following a single echo will lead to many of the lines of case space having extremely low signal amplitude. One of the approaches that is commonly used is to acquire only half of K-space and interpolate the rest, right, what we talked about earlier. And that's sometimes called half Fourier imaging or haste, right? It's one of the cuter uh, algorithms for so these are examples of single shot images, right? They're a little bit blurry, spatial resolution isn't that great. These aren't necessarily the best examples in the world, but there's something unique because this is a volunteer who laid in the scanner, let me image their brain, and if I get out of your way here. So we're imaging their brain and they're reasonable quality, right, T2-weighted images. And now, we ask them to just shake their head from side to side while we're scanning, right? So each of these, each of these images is acquired, right, in a total of a couple of milliseconds, right? So that's motion stopping imaging, right? That's like cranking up the shutter speed on your SLR camera to, you know, a two thousandth or four thousandth of a, a second or whatever it happens to be. Okay, so that that approach is potentially useful when you have an uncooperative patient. Right? These images essentially are not subject to motion artifact, and echo planar imaging is well, it doesn't have to be. It's also typically done as a single shot acquisition. Okay, so here is an example. So I'm showing you on the bottom a fast spin echo image and a gradient echo image. And on the top, the echo planar version of these two images. Right. So this image in your lower left, your lower right, each of those to acquire a stack of slices of the whole brain, you know, required somewhere around three minutes plus. These acquisitions were done acquiring a stack of slices through the entire brain in substantially less than a minute, in seconds. Okay. Now, the image quality, if you look at it, is not the same. Right? There is some blurring. There is much more sensitivity to this magnetic susceptibility right, due to blood in the left temporal lobe more similar to the gradient echo image. Notice that the spin echo EPI image has dramatically more signal in it. Its signal to noise is much better than the gradient echo image. And also, it's less sensitive 
to those magnetic susceptibility effects over here. Even though both of these right, are acquired with that right, long train of oscillating gradient magnetic fields. There's a long train of gradient echoes in both of these, but the spin echo still does a somewhat of a good job at, at compensating for those effects.